Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we unpack the science behind stuff that's explosive, mysterious, or just plain weird. Today's question comes from one of our dangerously curious viewers, Boom Buddy 77 Thanks for the suggestion, Boom. You asked, how do dynamites work? And honestly, same. Because if you've ever watched a cartoon where a coyote tries to blow up a roadrunner with a bundle of red sticks and a plunger box, you've probably wondered, what is that thing made of? And also, how did we survive the 1800s? Let's light the fuse on this one, right here on Explaining Everything. Let's time travel back to the 1860s, a magical era of top hats, questionable hygiene, and very unsafe chemistry. Meet Alfred Nobel, a Swedish inventor who looked at nitroglycerin, a volatile liquid that could explode if you sneezed near it, and thought, yeah, I can make this more practical. Nitroglycerin was powerful, but had the minor inconvenience of exploding unpredictably. Transporting it was like playing Russian roulette with a freight wagon. Nobel wanted to find a way to tame this volatile beast. The solution? Diatomaceous earth. That's a fancy name for a super-absorbent, fossil-based dirt. He mixed it with nitroglycerin and created a paste that was much safer to handle. And boom! Well, less boom, more control. Thus, dynamite was born probably followed by someone yelling, science rules, while backing away slowly. Okay, so what's actually inside those iconic red tubes? Classic dynamite contains three key ingredients. Nitroglycerin, the volatile liquid explosive. Absorbent material, usually diatomaceous earth, to stabilize the nitroglycerin and stop it from exploding every time someone hiccups. A protective wrapper, typically waxed paper or plastic, because even explosions need fashion. Together, these form a solid-ish, portable explosive that's way less likely to kill you accidentally. Not a 0% chance, mind you, just less. Oh, and let's not forget the fuse and blasting cap, Two essential components that bring the boom. Here's where it gets juicy. To set off dynamite, you need a blasting cap, which is a smaller explosive designed to trigger the main event. Think of it like a hype man for your fireworks. The blasting cap is ignited by a fuse or an electric current, and when it goes off, it jolts the nitroglycerin inside the dynamite stick into a violent chemical reaction. This isn't just a firecracker-style pop. It's a detonation, which is a shockwave fuel decomposition of the nitroglycerin. This releases a ridiculous amount of gas and heat in milliseconds, producing the kaboom we all associate with action movies, mining, and old-timey train robbers. Fun fact, the explosion happens at about 8,000 meters per second. That's faster than your excuses when you forgot your homework. Despite its reputation for chaos, dynamite has done a lot of useful stuff. It's used in construction, like blasting tunnels through mountains. Because hand chiseling takes forever, and humans are lazy. Mining, breaking up rock to get to valuable ores. Shiny things are worth the risk. Demolition, taking down old buildings with a bang, literally. Engineering projects, like redirecting rivers, building dams, or impressing physics students. It's also been used in rescue operations, believe it or not. In situations like avalanche zones or dam overflows, 
Controlled blasts with dynamite can help clear debris, redirect dangerous flows, or intentionally trigger smaller avalanches to prevent bigger, deadlier ones. It's basically the fight fire with fire approach, but with explosives. Yes, sometimes the safest way forward is blowing stuff up first. Dynamite is like the overly dramatic friend who causes a scene, but also gets stuff done. Look, dynamite isn't a toy. It may look fun in movies, but in real life, it's highly regulated, extremely dangerous, and most definitely not for backyard birthday parties. Unless your party theme is how to evacuate a neighborhood. In the US, handling dynamite requires a special license, rigorous safety training, and the kind of paperwork that makes you question your life choices. Also, fun but slightly terrifying fact. Over time, old dynamite sweats nitroglycerin, which can make it even more unstable. It's like if your explosives had an anxiety disorder. So yeah, maybe don't keep that 50-year-old stick in grandpa's garage for nostalgia. This is where things get spicy. People often use dynamite and TNT interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. Dynamite equals nitroglycerin plus stabilizer. Thanks, Nobel. TNT equals trinitrotoluene, a completely different chemical compound. TNT is more stable, less powerful, but easier to handle and store. The military loves TNT. Hollywood loves dynamite. And now you can be the know-it-all who corrects people at parties. Note, this may not make you popular. Of course, no video about dynamite is complete without a nod to pop culture. From Looney Tunes to Minecraft to Napoleon Dynamite. Okay, different kind of blast. This stuff has become iconic. Red sticks with fuses are shorthand for something is about to go hilariously wrong. And honestly, they rarely disappoint. But remember, real-life dynamite doesn't wait for dramatic countdowns. It's not patient. It's not polite. If it's going off, you'd better already be somewhere else. So there you have it. Dynamite, the explosive invention that made mining easier, construction faster, and cartoons way more dramatic. From nitroglycerin nightmares to Nobel's brainchild, it's a wild story packed with chemistry, history, and just a dash of please don't try this at home. Thanks again to Boom Buddy 77 for this blow your mind question. And remember, next time you hear a loud boom, it's either construction, fireworks, or your science teacher doing something very questionable with a Bunsen burner. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on explaining everything.